And I'm curious, you know, you've mentioned separation, despair, um, disconnection. You know, we're in this like very, you know, for thousands of years in this individualistic society that's been all about the self, which we know is changing. Um, you know, I tend to, even though so far a lot of this interview has been going into this this dark, deep despair, but I tend to be an optimist. You know, I do see the opposite spectrum, which is there's more and more people waking up. There's more and more thought leaders like you speaking up. There's um, more beautiful conversations. I believe this last two years is turning into a gift on some level. I know there's a gift in it somewhere. I don't, you know, maybe we don't see it yet. But I'm wondering, um, you know, what do you feel like is the ultimate root cause of all this? Like I've gone into maybe it's money. Maybe it's, you know, the the control. Maybe it's the seeking of power. Maybe it's the fact that there's constantly this, this pull, you know, this pull towards self. Um, but, you know, what do you think there is? Yeah, I know this is a big question, but what is the solution? Is there a solution? <laughs> yeah. So... One way to see the root cause is as a story, um, which is the fulcrum of our collective agreements. The world as we know it has obviously been created by humans, like, for example, the money system. I mean, most of the suffering of humanity on Earth is created by humanity. There's a certain amount that's also built into reality beyond our stories. People are always going to get sick. They're always going to die. They're going to get old. They're going to lose loved ones. I mean, there's already a lot of uh, pain and grief built into reality. But we add so much more on top of that, which you might recognize when you, like a lot of people have this experience of visiting another culture who lives in a much less modern way, really lives in community and and much more simply, and who may be, you know, earning less than $5 a day, and they say, I've never seen people so happy. Mm -hmm. As in that Cairo village in the Andes, you know, as in that that village in Afghanistan, as in that village in Bangladesh, as in the, among the Hadza in Africa, I've never seen people so happy. I've never seen that amount of joy radiating out from people, whether they're happy or sad. Still, all of that joy, like, like, where was I? <laughs> yeah. yeah, this, 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 this other way of living, which, by the way, yeah. I've seen, you know, multiple times where I'm like, wait, their kids run free in the streets yeah. and it's not a problem. Yeah. What's yeah. wrong with this Western society where everybody's putting up fences and security systems and locks and like people won't even say hi to you on the trails where I live anymore, you know? Right. Right. What so, um, yeah, so this separation, this, so this story of separation, I was, saying, I, was, I was talking about human agreements, right? We've added, we've, we've created way, way, way more suffering than is just the default in reality. And it's through our agreements and the agreements hinge on a story on a common narration of what's important, what's real, how, how, how to be a human being, um, uh, where we came from, where we're going, what a self is, what's the nature of reality, uh, why are we here? Like that's a story. So one way to change things is to change the story. But it's not quite, here's the solution. Because the story, even though it seems like it's a human creation, that's not actually quite it. We didn't actually create the story. We are acquiescing to the story. We're playing out the story. We, on some level, we, we chose to step into this story. And I have to believe that there was a wisdom in that, that, that we are playing out this drama for what it will bring to us in our development. 
Every story has to be told. Every story has to be lived for, for, for it to be integrated and for what is next to happen. So what I see is that this particular story of separation is nearing the end of its telling. And that it's not that we have to make a new story, but we have to tune into what the next story is and inhabit that story and ask, who am I in that story? How do you answer all these questions then? Why am I here? Um, what's the purpose of life? What's important? How do I be human? Um, how does the world work, right? All of these things have, a, have new answers uh, and new meanings from the story that is beckoning to us right now. So, so yeah, so it's not like, it's not a solution in the sense of we, the solutioneers, are going to make the solution happen. But we can recognize a transition that is possible. And then the question is, what is my part to play in the new story? What is mine to do? What is mine to say? What is mine to be? To recognize that, I think we have to actually look for it. You know, to see it, you have to look for it. To look for it, you have to know that it's there. And that's the value of telling a new story. It says there's something there. And that's also the value of psychedelics that gives you a preview. It shows you that there is a there there. And that becomes a beacon, like a guiding light toward that new story. It, and and it, 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 yeah, without it, like I'm just wandering and wandering and wandering in circles. And that happens sometimes. And I, and I, you know, have my head down looking at my feet, wandering in circles. But when I raise my gaze, there it is. And I remember.